Hey everybody, Grummels here. So, we had a few add to ground balancing changes last week and I think we asked for a little bit of feedback about it. So, I thought I'd make this short little video uh, talk a little bit about my opinion on how add to ground balance was handled so far. Since I really got into flying, which was in October, most of the add to ground balancing has focused on anti aircraft damage. Sure, there were a few changes to aircraft weapon damage as well. But most of the changes were done by moving that AA damage slider back and forth between Wet Towel and Look Ma. I got an air defense cruiser strapped to each arm. Now, back in October when I got into flying, anti aircraft guns were extremely strong. And a lot of people were not very happy about that. Understandably so, since a sky guard could pretty much rip apart the liberator back then, often before the crew had really time to react. And if you think about it, that does sound pretty overpowered. Imagine you have your 300 resources liberator, two or three people in it, and along comes a 200 resources sky guard, one person in it, and... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, you can guess where this is going. While I do think that it is pretty overpowered that uh, sky guard can pretty much rip apart the liberator before it can react, that is exactly what I am doing to tanks in my ESF on a daily basis. See, back then, and the guns, the anti-aircraft guns were probably overpowered, but at the same time, so were the air weapons. Well, anyway, if you played in a beta yourself, you know what happened next. A pretty big batch came along and brought us two new cool things. The new Continent Amarash and the biggest nerf hammer hit in history of shooters, bringing the anti-aircraft damage down all the way from I see that aircraft to maybe the sound of the explosion will annoy the pilot a bit. On the other hand, the aircraft damage was left pretty much alone, and it doesn't take a genius to figure out that that did not work very well. So, since then, at the ground balance changes focus pretty much on boosting anti-aircraft gun damage back up, while still doing only minor changes to aircraft weapons themselves, especially aircraft secondary weapons. Now, there are a few problems that this focus on anti-air weapons has. First of all, a lot of pilots might hate me for saying that, but air to ground secondary weapons are simply too strong. They can do too much damage and they can do it at a very long range. If you now try to balance this just by playing around with the AA damage, there are more or less two options that you will get. Either air just dominates the battlefield, which is very frustrating for the people on the ground, or you boost AA so much that it is as overpowered as the air weapons. That is what we had during the beta, and that leads to an extreme rock paper scissor balance that is more suitable for a RTS game than a shooter. Furthermore, since AA needs to be balanced to counter very powerful secondary weapons, like the rocket bots, new players will have a very hard time getting anything done while they do not have those weapons or the experience to be effective without them. So if it were up to me, I would reduce the damage and range of aircraft secondary weapons a fair bit. Mostly the rocket bots, but also the Liberator Sapphire and Dalton. Now, before you tell me that I just want to kill air, of course such nerfs need to go hand in hand with adjustments of AA damage and range. A reduction of aircraft damage just provides a basis from which a proper balancing is possible, one that is fun for all involved and does not lead to an excessive rock paper scissoring. Having reduced air to ground secondary weapon damage as well as ground to air damage would have a few advantages. First of all, it would make cannon armed ESF more viable than they are now which would make it easier for new players in stock fighters and also reduce pay to win concerns, since it would make rocket bots more of a side grade to fuel tanks rather than a pure upgrade that they are now. Also, SOE has stated in the past that they would like ESF to be the primary counter to air. And while I do not think that AA should be only a deterrent, I like the basic idea. I love dogfighting in PS2 and I would really love to see a proper air war fighting for dominance of the skies above big battles. Right now we will hardly see a dogfight taking place right above a big battle, since the participants of said dogfight would get lit up by powerful and long range ground to air fire. Long range ground to air fire that is currently simply necessary to counter the equally long range and powerful ground to air weapons. With both of them being reduced in range, we could have great dogfights above the battlefield, but AA should still be powerful enough to deal with planes that venture close enough to attack ground forces. Since Liberators naturally would have a longer range versus ground targets than ESF, ground to air should also have a greater effective range versus Liberators than ESF. 
This is why I think the two-part damage system for AA that was removed recently should be reintroduced. The reason would of course be again to make it easier for ESF to fight each other near a big battle. Now one last thing. Together with the nerf of rocket bots should also come a change of how air-to-air -air missiles work. Since this is a video about ground versus air balance I won't go into too much detail, but a lot of pilots, including myself, do not like how air-to-air -air missiles are currently implemented. They require no skill to use and have in my opinion a very negative effect on how much fun air-to-air -air combat is. Should a rocket bot nerf lead to a spike in air-to-air -air missile use, a lot of pilots would enjoy dogfights less. So those are my thoughts on air-to-ground balance. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe I'll see you next time.